In recent years, many places have seen record-setting rainfall, and all that water has to go somewhere. In Milwaukee, one urban river is being restored to a more natural state to help prevent flooding and ensure public safety. Meandering through Milwaukee's south side is the Kanikanik River. Surrounded by more than 600 homes and businesses, it drains the most densely populated watershed in the state of Wisconsin. Patrick Elliott is a senior project manager for the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District. The Kinnicknick River watershed is uh, 26 square miles. Uh, it's relatively small, it's, uh, but it's fully developed. It's fully urbanized. Flowing northeast, the river empties into the Milwaukee estuary before heading into Lake Michigan. Looking at the concrete channel today, it's hard to believe that it was once a natural, tree-lined river before the city expanded onto its banks during the first half of the 20th century. As the city expanded, as it moved from uh, basically the downtown area and expanded out more and more of the Kinnicknick River uh, was developed. And so as, as this development occurred, there were more impervious services that were created. Streets and sidewalks and parking lots, rooftops, all these surfaces that don't allow rain to soak in, the runoff from the rain will flow quickly to these these stream corridors. All those hard surfaces increased stormwater runoff into the Kinnikinick River and increased flooding. It created problems back in the 1950s and 1960s, and their approach to handling this, this issue back in the day was to try and streamline it. And so they just said, hey, let's create a nice clean channel that will move the water as quickly as possible out of this area. More than seven miles of the river and its tributaries were lined with concrete. And while it worked to quickly move water away from areas upstream, the new design actually increased flood events downriver. So in this section, at the essentially the bottom of the funnel where everything is draining to, you actually made the problem worse. It's a problem that still exists today. Unfortunately, we've had several years within Milwaukee and with the state of Wisconsin where we're seeing those flood events more and more. And it makes people understand that, that flooding is a serious danger, it's a serious hazard. Even without overflowing its banks, the river poses a major safety risk during storm events. The river comes up so quickly and it goes down so quickly. And within this section, it can move water up to 20 feet per second which is faster than whitewater rapids. So just imagine having whitewater rapids running through a dense urban neighborhood right in behind people's backyards. And unfortunately, because of that situation, people, if they fall in or slip in, they're not getting out. And we've had several deaths on the Kinnicknick River over the years. In addition to flooding and dangerous storm flows, the concrete corridor is also responsible for a major decline in the river's fish population. Brennan Dow is with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. In a, a natural habitat, you would allow fish to be able to use things like rocks or wood to be able to reproduce. This type of habitat with the concrete line channel, it kind of takes away that type of habitat for these different fish species that are looking to use that to reproduce. The concrete channelization also means there's no way for the river to naturally filter out pollutants before they reach Lake Michigan. Kinnickinnick River is known as one of the more urban rivers that discharges into Lake Michigan. Whatever makes it into this river will end up eventually finding its way into Lake Michigan. Um, sp specifically in how that pollution gets into the lake is just straight down the, the gauntlet. To address these problems, in 2009, the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District proposed a plan to remove the concrete from the river corridor. It started as a concrete removal project. As they completed the initial phases of that planning analysis, they got more data on the flood levels and the flood concerns. And so then it changed into not only a concrete removal channel restoration project, but into a huge flood management project. 
So this section, we're actually finishing up the last bit of concrete removal, and then they place river stone down in the bottom of the channel. And they'll also place boulders, and they'll strategically place those as places where fish that are trying to pass upstream, and they can rest behind a, a boulder to, to be relieved from the current. To see what the finished product will look like, you can look downstream at a stretch of the river that's been restored within Pulaski Park. Here, the project has grown beyond concrete removal and flood management into a full-fledged community restoration effort. Travis Hope is a lifelong resident of Milwaukee's South Side and president of the Kinnikinick River Neighborhoods in Action Group. This is a great project because everybody's come together, all different entities, and just really trying to, to make a change and do something positive for the neighborhood. The River Project has been like a spark plug in getting things going in the community. So one of the things that we did is we got public art into the neighborhood that was never in this neighborhood before. We have a brand new playground. That playground was outdated. We have a new basketball court. We have a brand new pedestrian bridge. I think this project has been very positive for the community and gives people something to look forward to. We're going to have this beautiful park and just a place where people can have pride in. And there's another community benefiting from the river restoration. You're allowing fish species and other different types of wildlife to, to be able to use things that haven't been available to them before. You're, you're adding habitat. You're laying the groundwork for things to be able to come and inhabit that habitat. If you get a lot of rain during the time of the year that salmon want to go up the river to reproduce, um, you might see salmon further up than you would have in the past. In all, the project will restore seven miles of stream within the Kinnikinnick River Basin. So as we construct these projects, as we widen the floodplain, uh, we are creating more space for the water to pool. As we open up some of these bridges, we're allowing the, the water to flow under those bridges and not back up into the, the neighborhoods and the business corridors. So as, as we construct sections of the project, we will be reducing flood risk. If you're able to bring back green space and trails that people are able to use along what used to be a concrete line channel, that really allows people to kind of use the resource that comes back to the river. So if you, if you build it, they will come. Thanks for watching. For more on these stories and the Great Lakes in general, visit greatlakesnow.org. When you get there, you can follow us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about our work. See you out on the lakes.